today we are going to talk about Sapiens by Yuval Harari. It is a book about the development of humankind, and a lot of it talks about how uh, that affects the human condition as well in terms of happiness and well-being. It's roughly divided into four different sections, um, where he talks about three revolutions and also empire building. So the first revolution is the cognitive revolution, uh, in that uh, there was a period of time where human beings became much more intelligent, and he attributes this possibly to the development of cooking uh, and better food capturing methods that allowed you to expend more calories specifically in uh, food or more calories towards your brain. And the main benefit was this allowed better communication, which eventually allowed individuals to form myths and beliefs that allowed humans to congregate in area, uh, in societies that are larger than roughly 150, which is uh, the amount of people that we can get to know well and gossip well with on a personal basis. But by having a shared culture, and a shared stories you can associate in larger groups. So that's the main thrust of the cognitive revolution. And then there's the agricultural revolution, where you have the development of agriculture, which initially was not good for humans' well-being, but it allowed a lot of humans to congregate in one place and also be stuck to the land itself. Uh, in there, you have writing develop, and it's largely used to record numbers because keeping track of economic transactions becomes much more important in a society that's getting a lot larger and in a society where there's a deferral of value in terms of uh, harvesting resources because you're growing stuff. And then he has empires, and uh, the next section would be roughly empires, where you have idea spread and globalization, which are very significant for moving humanity forward. Um, he talks about religion quite a bit. And then there's the fourth, the scientific revolution, which started about 500 years ago. And it's, uh, there are people started moving away from the stories that they started developing in the cognitive revolution, instead moving towards mathematics and empirical data. And at this time, during this time, capitalism explodes with the ideas from uh, Adam Smith, and that allows uh, much greater production. Up until this point, uh, the production per capita uh, hasn't changed much throughout history, uh, with the exception of the agricultural revolution, right? Because uh, you can, or even then the production's not higher, as much as uh, you get a lot more population density. But now production just explodes. You have the Industrial Revolution, and Harari uh, spends a lot of time talking about the, the psychological implications in the future towards the end of the book um, and where we might be going with AI and stuff like that. So overall, uh, this has been, I think, my highest rated book so far this year. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, I think it has a lot of texture in terms of its both summarizing uh, large swaths of human history, but also in such a way that it's uh, appealing towards um, talking about the human condition as well as uh, human nature in a way that um, can be useful or informative uh, in terms of daily practice and not just uh, some sort of monotonous um, regurgitation of history. So he, he touches on not only history, but like why that particular history is important. So for utility, I give it a six. Um, it's There's not a ton of prescriptions in there, but you can infer a lot of things based on what he's saying, and perhaps it should even be higher than a six, but six seems conservative for utility. For entertainment, I gave it an eight. Uh, it's very entertaining, um, I thought, largely because a lot of it's very interesting, and the writing is pretty well done, so gave it an eight. Uh, interesting, a lot of it has to do with human entity and the human condition, so it's going to score well because those types of things are interesting to humans. Also, there's a lot of data in there that is particularly striking that one can kind of hook onto and then use in conversation later or just kind of further how one thinks about things. For novelty, I gave it a six. Uh, a lot of the information in there can be found elsewhere uh, and isn't 
crazy, but uh, what what Harari does well is he synthesizes a whole bunch of both the historical data as well as the anthropological uh, or psychological um, implications of a lot of what's going on, and he paints it in a very interesting way. And so the way that he puts forth the data uh, is much more interesting than necessarily the data itself, or much more novel than the data itself, perhaps. Uh, for style, I gave it a 7. It's organized very well. Let's see. Um, there's a bunch of pictures and other stuff in here. Um, let's see if I can find stuff that uh, is fairly interesting. Uh, it doesn't show up very well. Um, but yeah, so uh, style, I gave it a 7. Uh, pretty strong. Readability, I gave it a 9. Uh, given the sheer amount of uh, the amount of stuff he covers and the speed at which he covers it uh, it's extremely easy to read um, and uh, it's a pleasure to read so uh, it scores well and then for difficulty I gave it a 7 uh, none of it is extremely difficult or out of reach um, he's still like covering stuff that's some degree of theoretic or theoretical so there's it's not like uh, you're just breezing through it, but overall it's very easy, especially considering the amount of material he covers. It's very, it feels very information dense without getting uh, dry and analytic, which is um, why the readability is so high and why the difficulty is um, up there on score as well, which means it's easy to read. Um, for this book, uh, I would recommend this book uh, to almost anyone. Uh, especially if you want to find out more about uh, human nature itself, um, uh, rough overview of history, because I mean there's a lot of history, it doesn't cover everything, um, as well as um, it talks a lot about uh, evolution um, in a way that's not really focused hyper on evolution, but just talking about the development of the human mind and how it relates to society, especially in, during the cognitive revolution section. After that, uh, his main argument is after roughly, I think it's either 30,000 or 15,000 BC, we're kind of set in stone with our um, physiology, but it really sets the stage. And it also, he talks back to that a lot where he says, you know, we, our brains are, are these 30,000 year old brains and now they're going through these massive uh, cultural shifts, and our brains aren't built for anything past the cultural revolution, right? So we're, the type of environment our brain is built for is not the modern environment. And bringing it back to that a lot um, helps to explain a lot of the psychological issues he talks about much later towards the end of the book. Um, so, I would recommend this book to almost anyone. I think that um, if there, if you were going to make a, a distinction against this book, it would be one along the lines of if nonfiction is normally the type of thing you're reading, um, this book is not super heavy in the prescription and maybe reads a little bit more uh, like a narrative or a novel than you would like and might not offer you a ton of advice in terms of you should do this and you should do that, uh, or an, an enormous amount of studies regarding certain psychological things. And so on that basis, maybe uh, you don't want to read it, but for the most part, uh, the information is about humanity. So under the if you're a human, uh, the, a lot of the information is pertinent. And so I would recommend giving it a go.